Hi there. This time, I'd like to talk about the fact that we are living in the pre-post-natural epoch. <laughs> and that uh, we seem to be determined to do everything we can to really piss off our great-grandchildren. First, I, <laughs> I guess I, I better explain what I mean by the uh, pre-post-natural epoch. I like to break history, the whole history of Earth life, down into three epochs, three eras, if you will. First is the natural epoch, and then the epoch that we are living in now, which I call pre-post-natural. It began when humanity started developing technology, uh, a complex communication, and, uh, and intricate social structures a, a few thousand years ago, and, and, and I believe it is in the process of coming to an end. We are now about to enter a, a new and very dangerous post-natural epoch. Now, I'm going to describe the, the first of these epochs in Darwinian terms. I, I, I do that because I really believe that the science of evolution is a, is a reasonable, if not perfect, uh, theory, but... I could also easily have used creationist terms. The pre-post-natural epoch, the whole concept of pre-post-naturalism is a fact, and it does not rely on any specific theory as to, as to how we got there. Throughout most of the history of Earth life, the, the primary factor which influenced the development of life and the proliferation of species were climate and natural selection. Up until the development of human technology, communication, social organization, Earth life evolved slowly and naturally, building ever more complex and, and diverse niches and then filling them with all kinds of life. Now the process was slow, but it was inexorable. And one has the sense that nothing uh, but, but a, a truly cosmic cataclysm could destroy this, this ever more complex, ever more diverse proliferation of life. I like to think of all of us, all of Earth life, as the technology of the DNA. <laughs> and the DNA has done an amazing job. But well, if the DNA is an entrepreneur developing an amazing new technology, it, it must live with the threat of corporate takeover by rapacious capitalists looking to exploit that technology for their own short-term gain. How's that for extending a metaphor? While it may seem that analogy got a little out of hand, it's not really that far from the truth. Because what has been happening over the last few thousand years has been a dramatic change in the way life operates on this planet. In this pre-post-natural epoch, things have been starting to speed up. Changes are now happening uh, not just through the simple process of random mutation and natural selection, but human technology is forcing changes upon Earth life. Now, we started by uh, domesticating predators, prey, and, and even plants. And then we learned through selective breeding procedures how to alter dramatically the nature of all those captive species. And then, 
we started taking over ecological niches, converting them to our own use, and in the process, destroying, or at least damaging, complex systems which the natural process had developed over eons. It's been estimated that 10,000 years ago, at the beginning of this epoch, humanity and our domesticated livestock consisted of uh, less than 1% of vertebrates on this planet. Today, what do you think? We are over 98%. That is what has occurred in the pre-post-natural epoch, but, but it is nothing compared to what is to come. We are about to enter into the post-natural epoch. Soon, through technologies, some of which are actually in their current infancy and, and some of which are as yet undreamed of, we will have the capacity to design our own species. Humanity will take control of all the natural processes. Well, with great power comes great responsibility. We've done a lot of unintended damage with the limited power we currently possess. We're already capable of pro producing any one of, of three his historic, total, cataclysmic scenarios that could destroy all of our and perhaps all of Earth life. And the only social systems that we have for averting disaster are weak international agreements which can easily be abrogated by an ignorant despot. Imagine how dangerous it's going to be when we possess the infinitely greater power which will be ours in the post-natural epoch. If we cannot come together as a species and, and establish the moral codes and, and the social institutions to control our worst impulses, we will surely bring disaster. All of our social, political, economic institutions are, are far too parochial and, and short-sighted, <laughs> and they are becoming more so. And our morality is woefully inadequate for the awesome responsibility we are about to inherit. Geniuses and prophets from, from Jesus of Nazareth to the Buddha to Eleanor Roosevelt have tried to show us the way, but we keep falling back into contempt, corruption, and consumption. Today, we so desperately need to come together in respect not only for all humanity, but for all of Earth life. And yet, today, hatred and tribalism are on the rise. Today, when we so desperately need to harness the, the genius of every single unique human being, educational systems are faltering and becoming ever more exclusive. Today, when we as a species are about to inherit the power and the responsibility to direct the future of all of Earth life, we are despoiling that inheritance through short-sighted behaviors which produce both climactic disruption and extinction of species.
future generations whose core technologies will be rooted in, in the management of DNA and the, and the management of life on this planet will revile us for having destroyed so much of their raw material. The natural epoch started coming to an end when we arrived on the scene with our technologies, our communication skills, and our complex social organization. But we have been allowed as a species a, a kind of an adolescent period during which we could grow into the responsibility we are about to inherit. Well, that adolescent pre-post-natural epoch is rapidly coming to a close. Repent, humanity, for the beginning is at hand. Thank you all for your attention. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you'll join me again sometime. All of my videos can be easily found on your friendly neighborhood internet at www.dafwold.com.